Okay, we're talking about the dot between the double dot and the first dot in the octave, but I've brought in an octave down so we can play it easier. We get a C-shaped C. -shaped C. Uh, we, we're going to be in the key of G. We're going to use it as an entry point for the key of G. And yes, you can use the open string as an entry point for the key of G. But I'm just using G here as an example. So we got a G-shaped G. Okay, and then we have a C-shaped C. And then we have a D-shaped D. So we're going to start on the second with D. Sorry. Like that, okay? So that's our, our G, C, D thing. Right there. We've got them all, all three between the double dot and the first dot. Now, I'll, I'll just repeat myself. You could probably do the G from here from the uh, fret nut to the first dot too but C certainly um, has ha, you know owns this part because you can play the diatonic here you can't play the diatonic this is a good point you can't play the diatonic up here in this box strictly where's my, my box drawer right there you have to get this F sharp that's your that's your diatonic okay so it's a, it's it behoove you to use this as your entry point for G because then you can get the F sharp there okay that's very important yeah if you're doing um, pentatonic it'll work but if you're doing diatonic scales you're going to want that F sharp there. So this is why it's better to do it up on the octave. Because then you have your lone wolf 7. Alright, so last but not least. We have from the high G to the A dot. We have a repeat entry point for the key of C. But now remember this... G, uh, C doesn't own this part anymore uh, particularly because this is our entry point for the key of G right so we can we can enter from the key of C in the A shape right there here's our tripentatonic banner A shape C D shaped F E shape G A shape C is uh, A going up to uh, A shape C right there uh, A shape I'm doing a C shape C a shape C is G C E right there A shape C D shaped F is C F A and E shaped G is D G and B so we've got those covered I just want to have, have a little word about these two diagrams here so we've covered the whole fret nut dot. We have our entry points for the five, all five keys. Isn't that wonderful? You can do that. Just remember the intervals. You got from E to G. That's the entry point for C. You got from um, <clears throat> from G to A. You have an you have an, another entry point for C. Okay, as the A shape because G is the fifth of A. Okay, then you have from A to B, you have the entry point for uh, D. And then from B to C sharp, you have your entry point for E in the A shape. All three in the A shape. And then from C sharp to E, okay, we have our entry point for the key of A. And then from E to G, we have our entry point for the key of G. And then from G to A again we have a repeat entry, entry point way up there for the key of C now I want to talk about these these two diagrams here what defines a key and this is very interesting I guess we'll just have to talk about it in, at where they're at where it's at so bottom string is key defining pattern so this is a pattern stack 
Okay, one thing that's going to complicate this is we start with the S2L and the S3L. This is a Dorian 2345672. This is a this is an S2L. This is like the bottom part of a pentatonic C. So it would be 34567 root in in you know in the open position the C would be the E would be the 3. It looks like a backward Z, doesn't it? So you just build these on one on top of the other. S2L, uh, S3L on top of that, S2L on top of that, and you get this pattern stack. An S2L with an S3L on top of it, on top of that an S2L, on top of that an S3L. Why have I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 strings? We don't have 10 strings. Because you're going to start on any one of these. If you start on the 3, 4, 5, and go to the next three, four, five up, you're, you're defining the key of C. If you start on the six, seven root and go up to the next six, seven root, that gives you the key of G. So this would be the key of G right here. So this would be your guitar right there, right? That would be your guitar. Only it would be warped over. We would warp over the top here. Okay, the top would warp over, and guess what? Guess what we got? That that's where it would be. We want to make it straight now. Up, oh, it, it locked in, but that's pretty much where it is. This is our key of G right here, where E would be the low E would be the sixth of the key of G. There's our lone wolf seven that we cannot access. <clears throat> okay, so. That is how how we make the keys. All right, so let's um, go back to what we were talking about. If we start on this pattern on the D, we would go from D to D from two three four to two three four like that. We would make a um, the a keyboard that uh, a fretboard rather that starts on the two three four if we have a fretboard that starts on the two three four we're going to be in the key of D the only problem is that we have to warp over the top two strings okay they're going to warp over for the key of what D yeah, and then we want to straighten out this guy here. I don't want to click it in until I straighten it out. So that would be the key of D right there. As you can see, D goes two, three, four. E would be the E would be the second now. Two, three, four, five, six. You can't access the seven. You can't access the three. But you can if you're doing it. If you're doing a key of D shape, or you can do it on the octave up, so on a high E, way up here. Okay, this would be two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, root two. Three, four, five, warp up, six, seven, root. Two, three, four. All right, it's a kind of difficult. Anyway, that's how we build the key of of D like that. And the same thing holds for the other keys. So you go from A string, which is the five six um, string pattern. So here it is. Here's the A string A string pattern, the five six. I've got the letters on each side, suggestive of bookend isolation for string pattern fifths. But if you're going in caged, got to talk about this for a second. If we're going in caged, we don't have string pattern isolation. We don't have bookend isolation. So between three, four, and five, right here, three, three, four, and five of the C, sh that five is shared with the A shape. You see the difference? Between the six, seven, and root, the G shape, the seven and root, as one is shared with seven root two in the E shape. That's cage because there's no sharing. Okay, back to what we were talking about.